pussy nigga Oh nine and next to see nigga Fuck with me dog Pull up on the scene of some luxury dog That's me and my Kobe yeah 24 and my clothes is real Iceberg fuck the diamond yeah And that lake shit like Xavier It's that Juan Carlos and Javier Roll coat trade off the boat I'm a fly nigga took a wing off Married to the game took my ring off That's me we can have a bling off Throw the auto tune on have a sing off If the pussy ain't mine and I speed off It's I don't even fuck with hoes rather beat off No lotion tips got the potion Fuck the commotion I'm out in the ocean A nigga in motion all this devotion Got a nigga up in his piss like he floating Go it's Monday, so that means three things. One, I'm not your MCM. Two, it's a Mamba Monday. And three, it's time for the 24 podcast. How are you guys doing? I am your host, the product of Poverty's Environment, the Pope Chuck Paul. Woo, it's brick as fuck outside. Jesus Christ. I ain't built for this cold weather, man. I know I was born in November. But I'm a tropical nigga. I'm Liberian. I can't do this cold. How you guys doing? Hope you guys enjoyed your weekend, enjoyed your week. Look like we have a couple of snow days. But before I get into anything, a couple of condolences going out. Rest in peace to legendary actress Cicely Tyson. Whew. Since the 70s, she's been breaking trails for women of color and women in general. And it's crazy how she's never won an Oscar. But you may know her from the autobiography of Miss Jane Pittman, from Roots, the play on um, the trip to Bountiful, which is crazy because I did some web design work for a marketing company called AKA to do some web banners for that play that she was in, which is crazy. And the thing about me, I'm not a real crazy movie buff, but the flick that I know her from the most is one of my favorite gangster films of all time. Hoodlum with Lawrence Fishburne, where she played Harlem's own Madame St. Clair. Even in that, she was a boss calling the shots amongst other gangster men. You know what I'm saying? So rest in peace to Cicely Tyson. She lived a long, fulfilling life. She'd done everything, you know, but even though at 96, it's still sad. And rest in peace to Hall of Fame, Temple University coach, John Chaney. Another person who was blazed the trail for black men and black coaches in all of sports. Through his 24 seasons at Temple, only one season they didn't make the tournament. And now it's his first season. Like, I'm, I didn't go to Temple, but I, I, I went to school in Philadelphia, with the College of Philadelphia, and his name just rings none but respect. Like, I've know, I know dudes know him personally, you know, who are really heartbroken by this, you know what I'm saying? Like, he was a pillar in Philadelphia, so rest in peace to John Chaney, Hall of Famer, by the way. And the talk of the town. If you've been living under a rock this past week, everybody and they mama has become a Wall Street stock expert. Yes, yes, yes. You know what they said during the pandemic? You know, you need to be working on three sources of income. If you ain't investing in stocks, if you ain't traveling. So now everyone's a stockbroker now, okay. It's kind of hard to explain, but I'll put it to you like this. A lot of Wall Street guys are betting against GameStop to go out of business, to do bad, because they have other hidden agendas and investments and other things. Now, a Reddit group, I want to get the exact name of this group. This Reddit group, Wall Street Bets, are trying to help failing companies by buying multiple shares in, their, in, the, in these companies to keep them afloat. The Wall Street guys aren't feeling that. And the problem with that is a lot of the regular folks, like myself, see a share for like, oh, it was 17 bucks? 
Turn the next day. Oh, it's 100? Let me get on that. And then it skyrocketed pretty much. I think by the end of... No, the beginning of the year, it was $17. N now, it's about $325. I could be wrong. It could be going up right now. But at the time I wrote this, on the site, it was $312. See where I'm getting at? So the share keeps going up. A lot of Wall Street guys ain't feeling this because a lot of people are just buying and selling, jumping in, making $20, $20 $50, $100, getting out. They don't want that. But here's the thing. Some people are putting in like their life savings. Personally, I'm a cheap guy. I don't like to buy large to make a small profit. Follow me here, follow me here. A lot of people are buying the share for like 300, cashing out at 375. Me personally, GameStop isn't a stock I see longevity in. So I can see why a lot of people are doing that. But I don't understand why you would put like your life savings or something like that in. Because here, here's the kicker. Last December, GameStop announced they will be closing approximately 1,000 stores between March and April of 2021 of this year. GameStop is a retail chain that can easily go out of business. Shares can plummet. I'm sure they can survive on the e-commerce side. Now for me, for instance, I bought a Macy's, I bought a share of Macy's for like five bucks last summer. Now it's about 2025. That was a gamble for me. Because I heard Macy's was also in talks of shutting down stores. So you got to be careful with this. Don't put in too much money thinking it's going to be like the next Tesla or Apple. GameStop is a retail chain that was doing bad. It's doing good in the stock market right now, but we don't know for how long. And also, Reddit investors were also dumping money into AMC, the movie theater, which was about to go out of business which looks like it's going to stay in business. Another share, another stock share as well as Naked. Now Naked, AMC, and GameStop are three of a few stocks that TD Ameritrade, Robinhood, and Webull put a hold on because people were buying these shares in the hundreds, in bulk, like just copping them up, which resulted in lawsuits to three of those apps. Look, man, people are tired of the folks on Wall Street eating, getting bailed out by the government. The everyday man wants to get their, get their money too. So y'all just be careful. We are dumping your money in. It's tricky. It's legal gambling. That's what I like to say. You know, person like to see where my money goes. I like to buy low for the long term, let it sit. Like when Apple split their shares into four um, late last summer when it was originally at 400 and they split it into four and it was selling at 125 a share. A lot of people were jumping on that. And me personally, I was like, look, I'd rather buy that 125 than rather buy that 400. My cousin wanted to sell his when it, when it, if it hits like 200. I said, look, this is a long-term game right here when it comes to uh, Apple stock. Because Apple's going to be around for a long, long time. You let that shit sit. That's just my two cents. I'm not a stock expert. I'm just telling you why everyone's going crazy over this GameStop stock. As, as, as well as AMC and Naked. Yeah. Pretty crazy, man. But look, get your money and be safe. Speaking of GameStop, all my nerds out there, finally, we get a motherfucking release date for the Justice League Snyder Cut on HBO Max. It's going to be March 18th. It's going to be four hours. I think they're going to have Darkseid. 
We might see a Green Lantern in there somewhere. But finally, we're finally getting the Snyder Cut. Originally, he's supposed to fully direct it. His daughter passed away. He stepped away from the film. And then since then, he was, he was pretty much throwing shots and criticizing the, 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 the director who finished it. Forgot his name. I'm not going to check. So, there was rumors and petitions like, yo, we want to see what you have. The Snyder Cut. So, we'll see about that right there. But man, what a crazy week it is. And also this week, Sunday, we have Super Bowl 55. The GOAT versus the Young GOAT. Tom Brady versus Patrick Mahomes. I think Antonio Brown is going to be playing. I think a couple of um, guys in the O-line for, um, for the Chiefs are injured. It's going to be a good one. I'm not a gambling man. Don't ask me who I'm putting my money on. But I'm not going to bet against Tom Brady in the Super Bowl. He's only lost, to, he only lost twice to Eli and Peyton. That's it. You seen him come back against the Falcons. Oh, Jesus. Look, I was talking hella shit that game too. Saying, yeah, Tom is out. Tom is out. Don't count that man out. Don't count that man out. As much as we like to hate on him. Like I said in the last episode, man. Tom Brady. He's that dude. Got Aaron Rodgers talking about. He may want to ask for a trade. Deshaun Watson, he ready to leave. Look, man. Power to the players. Power to the players. It's looking like a lot of NFL players are taking pages out of the NBA. They don't want to be there. Like, look, I ain't going to play. Deshaun Watson even got the um, no trade clause in his contract. He has to okay wherever they want to send him. Smart man, smart man. And also, this is really good. Of course, my hometown, well, Born in Queens, raised in the Bronx. You already know what it is. Castle Hill. After long talks and waiting around, we finally have the Universal Hip Hop Museum under construction. Yes, 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 yes. Yes. In late 2019, the state of New York contributed $3.7 million toward the project. The 52 square foot museum will have lots of art, DJ equipment, records, exhibits, all through it. And also in the Bronx Point development, the Bronx Point development, there will be apartments, um, performance space, and a food hall. So pretty much this whole museum will be in the middle of a new beautiful Bronx development. We try to have new apartments, stores, um, places to, for kids to perform, own, hone their crafts. It is a beautiful thing. Like we always say, the Bronx is the birthplace of hip-hop. 1520, Cedric Ave, you know what it is. It is a beautiful thing. It's rare that hip-hop gets celebrated like this. It was supposed to originally be open, I think, next summer, but to be open on 2020, the year of 2023 for the 50th anniversary. And then I think the following year, 2024, will be the official, official, formal opening. I, don't, I think 2024 will be the official, formal opening for like the 50th, 50th anniversary, but they'll do like a soft opening sometime in 2023. And you have Grandmaster Melly Mel and Curtis Blow among its founders, Q-Tip and, 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 and Fab Five Freddy's on the board, and executive director is Rocky Bucano. Look, I'm lost for words. I got a homegirl, Mahogany, who's doing some work with them as well. Can't wait to see what she has planned for that. I can't wait to visit, soak up some games, some knowledge. A lot of things in hip hop, 
we see a lot some people say like the younger generation don't respect the older generation but at least with this nobody has an excuse you can always go back look listen and learn what you don't know you can't call someone stupid if they if they didn't know so now folks have a chance to soak in some history and before I let go, next Wednesday, you can catch me on Clubhouse with my homegirl Naima for Wednesday Image Networking. My homegirl Naima is an image consultant, here to keep your closet clean, keep you looking good, you know what I mean? But what we're going to be talking about is kicks, menswear, the 824 podcast, and how I got started in the sneaker game. I mean, I could give you... A a little snippet of what I might be talking about, but I'm pretty much going to tell you about, talk, talk about what kind of kicks I like to wear, what kind of kicks I don't like to wear, my personal style, where I shop and how I shop, and how I get stuff for the prices that I want to pay. Pretty cool. Yeah, I know. But yo, that's all I got. It was a pretty smooth, cool week, nothing too crazy. You know, the Rona still around, Biden's still putting in executive orders. I'm still waiting for that 1400 Shit. Aren't we all? Like I always say, like, share, subscribe, comment. I am the Pope Chuck Paul. Peace out.